Welcome to the Transform Sales Podcast, where forward-thinking business leaders come to share their experiences and ideas, learn from each other, and amplify their results together. Hey guys, what's up? Amir Ryder here. Another episode of the Transform Sales Podcast, our software seller demo review series. My guest, Adam Robinson, CEO and founder of RBTB. You've probably seen him on LinkedIn. He's quite active. Adam, how are you? I'm great, Amir. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, just quick story. I I, I met uh, Adam through LinkedIn, just through uh, you know, be we were just very direct guys, right? And I I, I kind of messaged him. I was like, "What's your product all about?" And this was, I think, one back in retention, another company you had. And ironically, you gave me the down low about how you helped e-commerce companies at the time identify website visitors. And I was like, I got a brother, he's got a company. And, and I called my brother, my brother's like, I tried it out two years ago. So it's just kind yeah. of funny, small world, we're all, we're all kind of connected. Um, and, you know, I got very interested when I saw a post you made about, you know, investing $1 million in ads for sales agencies, because I'm doing the same thing. And I was like, oh man, we could probably split this budget because I'm also putting <laughs> not a million, probably a lot less than a million, right? So yeah. maybe, I could, maybe I could help the seed around and donate 100K to your 1 million, right? <laughs> um, but I think what's cool about what you're doing is that, you know, there's a little bit of overlap in the sense that obviously, you know, Clubhouse is a marketplace and we help buyers and, and, and sellers find each other, the right buyers and sellers. And um, I do like the fact that your technology um, has a little bit of a focus in lead gen and especially with helping agencies succeed because I'm all about it. Um, so I'm going to, um, I'm probably going to chime in a little bit more than normal in this one just because I'm actually using your product. And just FYI, I did share in our weekly newsletter uh, a link to this live. So maybe we'll get some people that got our newsletter and joined this. But I also gave them a challenge and I said, um, you know, because we, we, we talked about, we talked about, uh, website, first party intent data. I got to get the terms still mashed in my brain. But I told him, I said, if you visit my website and I get to see your LinkedIn profile shoot into my Slack through using our B2B, I'm going to follow you and comment on your last post and show you how it works. Uh, and it does work well. I had a meeting last yesterday with G2 Crowd, um, one of my reps, and she popped up right away on uh, on Slack. So uh, before we get started, maybe you can introduce yourself, your software, who you are, and then I can uh, ask the first question. Of yes, four sir. Questions. My name is Adam Robinson. You're right. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I'm spending a ton of my life uh, creating that content and then doing basically podcast tour in the rest of my time because uh, I think that's the future. <laughs> you know, like uh, yeah, Steve Jobs said that like ten years ago on, uh, on his keynote. Yeah, exactly. So he's he's like, I got to start posting on LinkedIn. I got so uh, anyway. My company is called R B Two B. I have another company called Retention.com. So that's where the R came from. We just instead of selling the e-commerce stores, we're pointing it at the B Two B world. Uh, and what it does is, someone can hit your site, and they cannot fill out a form, and you know, 20, 30% of them, we can get it to a LinkedIn profile and a business email address and we'll push it to a Slack channel for free. So, um, we're trying to charge like, you know, five to 10% of people. Uh, so it will, most of people listening to this, it will just continue being free forever. Um, and that's, that's the story. Just, yeah. just a guy, just a guy trying to grow a business, you know, just like the rest of us. Right. The guy trying to grow a second hyper successful business. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you live in Austin, which is in New California, so you know it's uh, yep. you gotta have, you gotta have two businesses these days to be in the states. Um, cool. So so I you know to me it's 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 there's a lot to it to unravel. Uh, talk to me straight up about like your your you know what your ideal customer is, industry, employee, location. I think it might line up with you know also who you can reveal, which is the United States and mm -hmm. USA. But yeah. what does that look like? Yeah. So you nailed it. They you have to have U.S. traffic. Um, this is not GDPR compliant, but, um, it does not actually make you violate GDPR. GDPR just doesn't apply because G the, the Europe is not seeking to regulate us technology and us data subjects. So if you have us traffic, even if you're in Europe, we can figure out who they are. So that's number one, us traffic. Number two is, so there's actually two different types of value people get out of it. Like my wife gets like two site visitors a day and she still loves seeing who they are, <laughs> but she's not booking demos with them. You know what I mean? So like yeah. it kind of is magic because it's free to just see who's on your site, no matter who you are. Right. Uh, so that is a source of value that applies to nearly everybody with the website. However, who we're targeting are SaaS revenue leaders and 
The other value is adding high intent leads to your existing outbound motion, right? And that, so it's like, if you know how to book an outbound demo, there is absolutely no question that sending, putting someone on your website into that same motion, it will book at a higher rate. Of course, because it's just a higher intent person than the list that you got from Apollo, right? Like that is very intuitive that that would work. The, the frustration that some people have is if they have, let's say, an entirely inbound model or they're not to where they know how to book an outbound demo yet and they install our script and they expect this to sell for them and they don't know how to sell, that's not going to happen. So even if you have some traffic, if you don't know how to book a demo already, then you need to use this like it's some sort of a toy, right? Like just use a free version, look at who's on your site, smile at them, you know, connect with them on LinkedIn. But you need to learn how to sell in order to book a demo with a lead, right? So you have to have a good product and good offering, right? Yeah, yeah, that exactly. There, there's a lot that goes into Most it. Most people ignore. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. that goes into it. But like at the end of the day, uh, you know, this is for people. The, the, these these are just leads for people who have a sales funnel and know what to do with leads, right? Yeah. Some people who call their leads, they have a tremendous amount of success calling these people. We can't call Shopify stores because you'll get burnt at the stake. This is not the culture of the ecosystem. Um, mm -hmm. We're booking a ton of demos with Shopify stores, emailing people who were on our site and connecting with them on LinkedIn, right? It just works. Uh, but we also have an outbound motion over there doing something similar. So, um, so yeah, it, you know, th the better that you are at this, the more successful you will be sort of the more traffic in the bigger company that you have, like the more, you know, uh, I want to chime in. Yeah. I see it differently, right? I see it the same and differently in the sense that everything you said makes sense to me and I, and I get it. Right. But when I asked you, who is it for, right. I kind of tried It'll, you know, putting you into like a B2B category, industry category. But if you really, really think about who this is for, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, I don't believe in inbound and outbound. I think those terms are crazy. I don't believe in marketing sales. I just believe in revenue, right? I don't know of anybody who will ever book a meeting without visiting your website. I don't know of anybody who will ever not ask you for your website while you get a cold call or an email. So I don't think they're separate anymore at all. Yeah. So if I were to answer, if you were to put me at the hat of I'm, I'm the CR of RB2B, I would say it's for, I would actually say any leader, any revenue leader that's working content marketing, webinars and virtual events, email marketing, social marketing, SEO, pay-per-click, pay-per-C advertising, account-based marketing, partners and referral programs, which we are partners of you guys too, interactive content, outbound sales and marketing, influencer marketing, retargeting campaigns, sales enablement, marketing directories. Where do all of those people go? Your site. Your website. Right? <laughs> um, so I see your tool as a tool that is fighting the fact that we need more touches, more expenses, and a, co a rising cost of customer acquisition. It's going up just like inflation, right? So I see your tool as an anti-sales in uh the anti-inflation in the sales tool because now every single part of your revenue funnel touches your website and now you can actually proactively reach out via linkedin email let's face it if you got someone's linkedin you got their email and you got their mobile number right basically yeah. right so now i see it where you can efficiently actually reach out to people that have been touched by your other channels. And then now for me, I see a sales development rep in SDR as a marketing function that actually uses the phone, email, and LinkedIn to further increase the efficiency of all those channels, right? Yeah. And now when it comes to all the lovely sales agencies that we have in our community, um, imagine that your SDR is calling website visitors versus just a cold list from Apollo. Well, now you're going to convert higher because they all those visitors might have touched the 13 different methods I just talked about, right? Yeah. Uh, I didn't mean to jump in this, you know, this, I, I'm just a user of your tech, right? And I, I, I got using into it. So it, it, it's, uh, that's how I see it. I see it as, as something that increases the ROI on every single thing you do with revenue. Um, you know, second question, 
and I hope I didn't answer it with my little rant. Uh, what does your technology help people do that they couldn't do before? And I think we did mention it, but maybe you can just, you know. Yeah. By the way, I wrote that. Down. Over it. I, I, you, 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 I wrote that down. That's that's really beautiful. That needs to make its way to my website. So. We have, like, you know, you you have this world where you're building tools to help people. I have a marketplace where I'm trying to line up every product, people, and service. And it gives me, it, it's like, it gives me, like, every weapon out there, right? So I just have a different perspective. Glad you wrote it down. Happy to jam with it. But, yeah, I think it's an anti, anti-inflation uh, tool. Yeah. So what does it do that people couldn't do before? So people were, there is a ubiquitous technology in B2B that is sold by Clearbit, Six Sense, Demand Base, Zoom Info, Lead Feeder, Lead Forensics. The list goes on. Uh, it is reverse IP lookup. That technology identifies a visitor to the site to the account or company level. Every B2B is using that tool. Why? Because it's valuable. Of course, you want to know who's on your site, but then you got to go guess who it was. You got to like take that company and oh, you yeah. say, okay, who in my ICP could this have been, right? What my tool does, which that technology did not allow, is it actually takes it to the person. So the individual that is on your site will throw their LinkedIn URL and a headshot. We'll stick their mug in a Slack channel. We're going to show people. Yeah, so that like you or your rep, I mean, we're actually building an ICP filter right now. So we can only put ICP visitors into the Slack channel and like, like we'll tell you if they're in your CRM and stuff like that. Like we're just making the tool more powerful right now. But kind of the version of what it does right now is it just all, all your traffic, junk and not junk. It just sends it to LinkedIn. So, or it sends it to Slack. So that is what it does. The, the critical difference is it takes it to the person rather than to the company. So for anybody listening to recap, right? The before was you're getting company signals. I, I know someone at Google was searching for lead generation, right? Well, that's 20,000 employees. Oh, so let's target them all on LinkedIn. Let's do bro- no. inflation. <laughs> like, like if you're going to target 10 profiles in a company, because you know that company's searching, you're going to pay for those 10 profiles, right? Um, now you're getting the contact, right? And I, 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 si- I signed up with the retrial guys five days ago, and I already I, I got it rocking and rolling. So after he does his demo, I'm going to show you the people that um, have gone on my site. And uh, so that's a big deal, right? So it's contact level, right? And, and, and you could do things with that contact. You can add it to a sequence that includes a social phone and email selling motion with an SDR and automation. Or you can actually include that into your LinkedIn, uh, Meta, Facebook uh, display ads we're targeting, right? Like I think if you know who it is, you probably can get them in in digital and in the sales world, right? So efficiency, fighting inflation, right? Back at the same thing. Uh, yep. How does a buyer measure success with your product? So kind of back to what I was saying before. For 90% of the world, they're never going to pay anyway. And of these two camps, if you're like for free, there's kind of a wow factor of just knowing who's on your site, right? So like a lot of people are using the free tool in that way, right? Small, very small, but like they they probably aren't the the, the best clients of the agencies in your ecosystem, right? Sure. The major way people measure success is, am I booking demos? (laughs) <laughs> right? Like, am I getting, you know, am I adding, to, am I building sales pipeline with this tool? Uh, yeah. m- you know, multiples of what I'm paying for it if I'm paying for it, right? Um, there are other benefits that are not as, you know, hard hard dollar um, sort of like uh, quantifiable, which it's really interesting to see investors that are on your site, right? It's really interesting to see competitors that are looking at you. It's interesting to see uh, partners that are like checking out certain pages. Um, it's really interesting to see if, if you have a recruiting department, they can look at candidates looking at your site, right? Yeah. Like, but at the end of the day, you know, what people care about most is stopping this inflation. And, uh, you know, it's like, if you're buying, yeah, leads, right. yeah. if, building, if, man. I know what you're doing, you're building, you're, 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 you're in the build out phase. I have an idea about how people measure it. Cause I'm thinking about how I would measure success. Right. Um, I recently, so when I started doing our sales pipeline meetings, which I ripped apart and I redoing them because they were junk regardless, I started, incre- I started actually starting with the website traffic and sharing that with our SDRs. So 
could it be possible that uh, a company could go to Google Analytics, see that they had 10,000 visits in, let's call it June, take a look at RB2B, see that you've identified uh, 2,000 of those, right? And then actually just do your same funnel conversion and say, okay, now we're actually converting 5% of our traffic into buyers. Is that a possible you know, future for uh, you know, um, a buyer measuring success of your product? And obviously I mean, it's an interesting question when you measure success with a free product, right? Because it's kind of like, what, you know, it's like, do we, let's, let's, let's play the world where your product costs a million dollars because it has a million dollars of value. It has a lot of value to me, man. So yeah. is that possible, you think? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, what, what would the, pro like, is there anything different about the product or is it just like process-wise people are analyzing it that way? In this oh, scenario, the day, I think the big thing, and, and from us, is just creating transparency for like who the right buyers are for the software, right? Like yeah. how they know it's working, right? Because oftentimes companies will use software and they'll they'll say it's not working and they don't even know what they're measuring against. So the idea of, of this yeah. conversation is just setting that kind of expectation where, you know, it's obviously, you know, uh, for those of you that you know, I would say are hitting your monthly quarterly sales goals. I think you shouldn't measure anything just besides those goals, especially if you're under 20 million in revenue, my opinion, right? But for those of you that want to say, is this working, right? Um, I'm wondering if you could just kind of take a look at your traffic now and overlay it, right? And, and kind of almost be like, okay, we're emailing these people, we're calling them, they're hitting our website, and now we know who they are, right? And, and that could yeah. just be success in general, right? Yeah, um, I mean, that's a dream scenario for me because it's just, that's, if, if people accepted that, that's like kind of a, always going to be a lower churn use case than people getting their calculators out and be like, all right, well, you know, I paid this and I got that, like whatever. Um, no, 100%. Yeah. Uh, I could picture a list right now in HubSpot where it's like uh, SQL, right? Sales qualified lead. And it's like rule would be they, they visit the website. I got their LinkedIn from RB to B and they've opened or clicked an email. Yeah. I have to call them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if that yeah. list just grows to a thousand a month, that's success for me because, right. you know, having SDRs focus on highly converting leads is a success thing. That's where that's where a lot of buyers are struggling. Their SDRs are calling strangers, the wrong buyers. They're getting means the wrong people. People that don't know your brand, right? So, uh, another analogy I have too is like, you know, I'm like one of those guys. I go to Nike, right? You go walk into the store, and the sales rep's like, "Hey, can I help you?" And you're, in your mind, you're like, "Not really. Like, I like a sneaker. I'll just tell you the size." And I, I always feel bad in a way, being like, "No, I don't need your help." But yeah. think about how many people go on websites, especially your website. And they don't know what they're looking for and they need help, right? And 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 there are that's what I think is great about your tool is it kind of gives it kind of allows an SDR to kind of almost be that like in-store salesperson where it's like, hey, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if you saw our website, maybe you did, but do you need any help? I'm like, if the guy's interested, he probably would be impressed that he was called and he visited the website, you know, and especially if he's you know kind of confused and doesn't know what he's looking at. So for me, it's almost like a, a retail sales play that yeah. doesn't work in retail that you're bringing to b2b if that makes sense um which yeah. i like yeah, yeah. let's get into the fun part i'm like look I'll, I'll just be transparent what i liked about it it took me five seconds to put the code in right um i really liked your slack follow-up where you kind of uh you, you, you know hey follow me on linkedin you know you kind of like really almost gave the onboarding experience right into slack which is awesome right um, and guys, it's, it's, it's coming up. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting there. Right. So, you know, I was able, I'll add it back there. You guys may see my screen. So I, you know, by the way, you got to hook up this trial. I get this over here, but I, I signed up, I think on uh, the 15th, right? So I got 12 profiles revealed 14 yesterday and I got 12 today and my average is obviously going up. My page views are going up. Right. I could see what pages they're visiting. I know that th some of these pages are only on LinkedIn, like my three interview offer for anybody who wants to hire remote candidates. We do that. Um, so I could find, I see what the people are doing, I see where they're at, but I can also see right here the profiles themselves. Right. So I can see, uh, and by the way, I'm in Columbia. So if there's any violating any data rules or something, you can come down to Columbia and talk to the uh, local local administration here. Um, they probably won't care. Uh, so I can see Jason Rodriguez. Sorry, Jason, you probably did look at our website, right? I, I, I can see basically this guy's in our CRM, I think, right? Because our CRM is connected. Uh, I can see Matt Russell, um, strongest AI out there. He's looking at this, right? And I can see basically, um, I can see their activity and I can see where they've been. So like, I now know that, you know, if he was, you know, at a, a conversion event or a checkout event, I can know where his intent is and I can map that, right? Um, which is what I like company details, this is, but this, 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 yeah, this, this, these pages are all pretty new, man. They're kind of in beta. <laughs> <laughs> well, this stuff, the, the dashboard, we, we, we just, 
I'm going to Slack. Just just launched this profiles page. So it it is, it's great because it's like, I like it. It's showing you stuff that the Slack channel is not showing you. Uh, but it's still um, somewhat buggy and not responsive. I'm trying to pull up right now my Slack. Just want to make sure entire screen. You know what? I'll pull it over here. Yeah, I'll pull it over here. Entire screen and yeah, but, boom. But that, so you guys can see, you a, you guys can see my way, Slack? That gave, that gave you a general idea of what was going on. In that well, look, I'm in my Slack right now. And this is today, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, go back to today. Today, today, there's, today. The G2 lady. there's a G2 woman you're talking yeah about. I was literally on the phone with her um, if she's listening uh, and it popped up right so I, I can literally hear right here what I've been doing is just I put a smiley a, a little thumbs up whenever I connect with them right so I've just been going here put a thumbs up and I'm working right now my team is just integrating HubSpot so that I can take action on this in HubSpot but anybody who could see, I just pushed that bot in and this LinkedIn profile went up right away. I can quickly interact with them. So it's for me, I just think it's awesome. I'm like, I, I, why would you focus on strangers when nobody's calling your website visitors? If anybody can give me a logical reason why you should choose a stranger over a website visit um, and you, you, you beat me in an argument, I will, I will give you free access to RBT, be whatever. <laughs> so I'll give you free access to Adam software. Um, but yes, yeah, so I pull up this guy right away, Hassan. I hope you're, I hope you're watching. I'm going to give you a comment and a like, but yeah, I'm getting these signals right into my Slack. And, and uh, like I said before, I, I, I don't want to sound like a, uh, I don't want to sound like a salesperson, but I, I am a salesperson and I'm actually pretty excited about what you built because I'm a huge fan of taking action on people that actually know you and uh, have seen your brand. So I could see right here the page that they went. This actually person went to my glossary. So it's, it's funny because this glossary term was in the newsletter, right? So I sent a newsletter, a person went to my glossary. And now I know that they went to the glossary, right? And, and, and I actually have terms. This is literally from, I'll, I'll minimize my screen so you can see my Beehive newsletter. This is literally from this email that just went out. And you could see content marketing was the first definition. They hit the glossary on the page and now I know. Something as simple as that can be an opening, right? Now I know what they're interested in. So, you know, I think it's great. Um, you know, this went out to 36,000 people and we got 4,000 opens in one hour, it's not bad. Um, I'm going to stop sharing screens, but yeah, I'm like, look, Adam, CloudTask, Marketplace, help buyers and sellers. We have a lot of tools that we don't use. We have some tools that we do use. I happen to be using your tool. I like it. I think it's great. I think it's got a lot of applications for both the end user and for sales agencies. Um, I hope I hope that, uh, I hope that we can uh, continue to work together and I can continue to use your tool and people find value in um, you know, generating revenue. And if you don't find value in generating revenue and you're in B2B sales, you're in the wrong business, you probably should get out. Right. So, um, you know, it's kind of like, it, it, it's kind of like, uh, it's just so simple. Sometimes we want to make it more complicated. Right. But it's like, they're visiting your website. Now you know who they are. Does it have yeah. to be more complicated <laughs> that, that, than that? That is it. That is it. You That it. is it. Yeah. So anybody who's watching this, of course, uh, you know, we have access to the free trial in the comments below on this podcast and in our marketplace, but feel free to contact Adam wherever he is. Adam, where can people find you, contact you, communicate yeah. with you, learn from you? Hit me up. LinkedIn, I'm doing a lot of stuff. I've dedicated a substantial portion of my life to it. Um, Adam at retention.com. If you want to email me, that's cool. Uh, check out rb2b.com. Like I said before, the intention is to make it free for everybody for like 99, 95% of people out there. So it will very likely be free for you to just forever to just mess with it. Uh, and yeah, man, that's it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'm going to use your tool and I'm going to talk about it more and I'm going to give you some product feedback and uh, we're going to help people make more revenue and fight inflation. Adam, thank you for being a guest on this episode and everybody who tuned into the Transform Sales Podcast, our software demo review series. Thank you and uh, good luck identifying your future buyers on your website. Take care. Thank you, Amir. Thank you.